Hey guys, OneClue here. I hope all of you are doing well. well. In today's episode of BidX 101, do we want to take a look on what kind of issues you might figure out using XOS and how you can identify them. So let's get started and right into it. As you can see, I do have XOS opened and don't wonder, this is the web UI using the BitX hacks. It's a little bit buggy and not really that good, but it doesn't matter. You will get the point of what I'm talking about here just in a second. So think about it. You do have a BitX and for whatever reason, it does not perform or it does not work as expected. It does not work at all. So we're not taking a look on what might be the cause for slow hash rate or low hash rate or anything like that. What we want to take a look on today is how can you identify what component potentially does have an issue and how you can identify this using X or S. So the first thing that you want to take a look on is the power. And obviously you do see 51 watts currently using here on the hacks. Don't worry about this. Usually you should have something between 10 to 17 watts using your usual BitX, your BitX Ultra or your BitX Supra. If you do see power consumption below, I'd say three watts, probably your ASIC is not working. So it's a good identification of actually figuring out, all right, I do have way too less power consumption. Something is not right here. So let's figure out what this could be. A good point here would be to go over to the logs and let me quickly do that here with you and click on show logs. This one here obviously is doing something. And an important thing here is it is showing me ASIC results. If you do see ASIC results in your logs, you do know that your ASIC does have a connection and is doing anything. So this here will only be the case if your ASIC is sorted on correctly and is doing actually some work and is working. If you don't see that, you know something is wrong there. So let's help hop back over to the dashboard and let's dive into the section of, okay, what might be the case that my BitX does have so low power? An interesting point here is that we need to take a look on the ASIC voltage measured. This is an identifier that you can use to actually determine what might cause this issue. So the first thing is, your power consumption is below three watts and your ASIC voltage measured is 1.2 volts. Then I can clearly say there is a solder issue with your ASIC or your ASIC is broken. How to identify an ASIC if it is broken, take a look on the osmu.wiki page on scroll all the way down to the OSMU lab and click on the BM1366. There you do see a picture of an ASIC chip that is broken. You do see a crack on the die. This is one way to identify if your ASIC is actually dead or not. Another thing would be that you do see the 1.2 volts, but your ASIC is still not working. It's not outputting anything. It might be that you do have any solder bridges on your ASIC or that the serial pins that you do should have soldered on are not connected properly. So what I do recommend here is preheat or reheat your ASIC chip again and apply a little bit of pressure to the ASIC chips so that you do press out the excessive solder that is underneath it and maybe then clean it up a little bit and hopefully your board works then. If you do so, be careful. Do not, do never apply any pressure on the die. And in the following video, I will explain you on how you should do this properly. So before you do that, wait for the next video, I will explain on how to apply pressure to an ASIC chip properly. So another thing would be, and this is now the important thing, that your power consumption is below three watts and you do see ASIC voltage requested something like 100 millivolts or I don't know, point, uh, yeah, 0 0.5 volts, something like that. This identifies to you two things could be wrong then. So the first thing would be that your ASIC chip is not properly soldered on and does have definitely any solder bridges on them, which is causing a spike or a drop in the voltage. The second thing and the most likely thing here is that your ASIC chip does not get the appropriate amount of voltage that it needs. And this identifies to you that U9, the buck converter on your BitX device does have any issues. It might be that it is broken and U9 usually 
is not really the best component to replace but it does have a high likelihood of not being a good component and sometimes some of them are not working so it might be the case that you need to change u9 the most likely thing with u9 is that you do have any solder issues with u9 especially if you solder on your bit the first time ever it's very likely that you do see that the bit x and the u9 on the bit x is not soldered on properly. In the next video, I'll show you how you can actually identify soldering issues and remove them or work around them and then solve these issues. But this is basically how you can identify using the X or S software, what kind of issues you might have. If you have resolved any of these things and U9 looks good to you and you don't have the ASIC applied, then take a multimeter and apply the probes to the pins on your bit X and see if you get 1.2 volts out of it. If you do so, and if you solder on the bit X ASIC again, and it still does not function and it is not broken, so you don't see any cracks on it, apply another ASIC chip on it. If it is still not working, then it's probably U2, another component that is needed in order to drive your ASIC chip and in order to get this working properly. So these are the things that you can do to actually identify any issues using XOS and, and no need to actually take a look on the board. It's just some ordinary tips that I assembled over the course of repairing plenty of these devices. So I do hope that you find this video informational. If you do so, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you do like this content, please give me a thumbs up so that I do know that you like this content and I will produce more of it. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.